Hi everyone, it's Michelle from Country Morning Creations. I am here with, I'm not even sure what I'm gonna end up with. So what I've done, I just joined Andrea, who is Artie Mays' Facebook group. I don't know why I haven't joined it before, but I finally decided to join it yesterday. She has a July challenge and these are the freebies in her Facebook page. They're amazing. So I decided I wanted to use them right away. I'm also going to hang out with a friend, Michelle, this weekend. And I thought I'd like to make her some happy mail, kind of something just as a little something to bring when we get together for coffee. So what I have done is I've printed out the freebies and a couple of different things. And if you have not joined Andrea's group, you need to. I've been following her on YouTube for years and I don't know why, I don't know why, but now I'm, I'm, I'm there, okay? So one of the things is I am completely obsessed with this pink butterfly. Uh, this was one of the freebies that I I, I did two to a page. So this was a full eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And I used the printer setting that allowed me to have two on each page. This is printed on sticker paper. And then I'm gonna just show you real quick. I fussy cut them all out. And so I have all of these butterflies and roses and they're a little bit smaller, so if I'd printed them out bigger, they would have been much bigger. But for what I'm doing, I think these are going to be just the right size. I'm going to set those up there. So I did this on sticker paper. Then I used regular cardstock and printed the, the two color collages on it. They're, they're similar. They're basically the same elements, just in a different arrangement. And you can see these are made for A4 paper not our American eight and a half by 11. Then on regular paper, just printer paper, I went ahead and printed the, uh, I'm not sure what you would call these, the aged ones, the more neutral colored ones. And then this was another freebie. And I'm not sure how I'm going to use this, but it's got all of these quotes. Then they're smaller. Then there's some different words down in here and then there are some black based background papers so i've done all that and then i may or may not use this i printed she also has a uh, like a specimen card printable where you can just print it onto anything and i'm thinking i may do some specimen cards there's four on this using this card stock then i'm grabbing an eight and a half eight and a half by 11 sheet of just the craft paper. And we're going to start with that. So I kind of, like I said, know where I'm going, but not really. So we'll kind of see what we end up with. <laughs> I'm really not sure, but I know I want to make some kind of a folio folder thing. So I'm going to go ahead and score this at the three and seven inch mark. And then I'm going to come over just an eighth of an inch here and an eighth of an inch here so that when we fold this up and hopefully we get it all stuffed, then we will actually have um, room so it will fold. So I'm going to just fold these over on the score lines and let's see if I can do this. And if you know, you're supposed to turn things like this over and not just um, fold them the direction that they kind of sort of want to go. All right, and then this one goes in here. So now you can see that we have a folio folder thingy. And I'm gonna do one more thing because I love this punch. So somebody turned me on to these We Are Memory Keepers Crocodile Corner Chompers. I have three of them. They're in a whole bunch of different sizes. 
But for this folder, I wanted to use the deco one, which is kind of my favorite. Uh, let me make sure this is out all the way. There we go. This is one of my favorites because it gives a cool rounded corner without it being a plain rounded corner. I, does that make sense? All right. So I have these rounded corners. So when this is all folded, we now have this beautiful rounded corner. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and layer these pieces at least to the outside. They are already smaller than the brown paper. So I need to come in just a little bit more. And I think what I'm going to do is tear this so that everything is the right size. And I just have a metal ruler. I don't have one of those cool decal rulers that a lot of people have um, someday maybe, but for right now, this is what I have. And tearing off just a tiny bit like this is always the challenge, but we're gonna get her done, right? And some of this stuff being left on the edges is probably okay. I know, I'm off the camera now. All right, so we're going to just start by tearing those edges first. There isn't a particular order that I'm doing this in either. In other words, I didn't sit and think and say, okay, I'm going to put this paper here, this paper here, this paper here, this paper here. Nope, that would have required way too much brain damage, so I am not even doing that. So what I'm going to do is use this paper, and let's see if we do it sort of like this. Um, oh, I do want to tear a little bit off the end so that everything is torn and it's a little bit more consistent. So we're going to tear just a wee bit off this edge. Oh. So if you're wondering, you'll see me a lot of times using just my middle finger like this and I don't use this finger. I broke this finger actually a couple of years ago. I slammed it in a car door on my way to school. I'm a school teacher. Anywho, I trained myself to craft without it and have never gone back to actually using it. So there we go. Now we have that and it tore a little bit in the corner. That adds to the, uh, I think the, uh, the aged look, which is totally fine with me. All right. So I'm trying to find my, where these are going and line them up. So let's pull this one off and let's see what we have. So that will go there. Perfect. I love it when an evil pen comes together. All right, we're going to do the same thing now for this piece. And we're going to bring this in just a wee bit about like that. And we're going to tear this one again. And we should be left with a little bit, that may be a little bit less than what I wanted, but that's fine. I like it, we're going to go with it. And then this last little piece goes here. And we're going to come in maybe about like that. And don't worry, I'm going to set this aside because we'll use that later. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this corner using that deco corner as well. So it looks like that. Okay. So we've got these. I'm going to ink up the edges using my Distress Ink. I love gathered twigs. That's my favorite. I don't remember who turned me on to it years ago, but uh, I've kind of used it for a while. So I'm going to ink up all of this and I'll be right back.
So I've taken air, I've inked all the edges on both the cardstock as well as the papers we just ripped. And it is now time to go ahead and layer these down. And I'm trying to remember what order they go in. It looks like they go in this order, but I may, nope, we'll just do them in this order. All right, so I'm going to grab my favorite for paper, which is Fabrifix, because it's uh, acetone-based and it's not water-based. It tends not to buckle the paper, which is something I like. And I know there's a lot of people out there that just cannot do Fabrifix because of the acetone, but that's my choice and I love it. All right, we're going to put this down about here. And I know that I don't have to use a brayer when I'm doing this stuff, but I, I really like to use a brayer just to make sure everything is good and stuck down and I don't have bubbles or wrinkles anywhere. That's just a kind of a personal thing. So we're going to get these all glued on kind of in the middle. All right, sprayer this one more time. Looks like stuff is pretty well. Oh, you know what? I'm noticing that the glue is oozing out at the top. I find that if I can wipe it off fairly quickly, um, it's almost like using an eraser. It comes off pretty well and then I'm not stuck with a lot of glue. So maybe I'll try not to put quite so much glue at the top this time. This glue is really weird in that sometimes it gets really thick and then I just have some acetone. It's sold as nail polish remover, but I have some acetone that I simply take and thin it down and then I probably made it too thin. Let's see that. Looks pretty good. Okay, let's make sure we're holding it this time. All right. That goes there, and so now we have kind of the outside of this. Let's see, it's gonna go like this, or at least that's the plan. And I'm going to go ahead, let's do the same thing to the inside using the other paper. Um, I will be right back once I've gotten that done, and I'm also going to take a moment and um, actually, uh, stitch around all of these as well. So it may or may not catch everything on the inside, but I'm going to catch everything on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera and I'll be right back again. At this point, I have now sewn around each of the different sections. So I did not sew all the way across this way. I simply sewed around all of the paper pieces I love strings, so I'm gonna leave them here, but if my friend Michelle wants to take them off, she is more than welcome to cut them down. Um, so we have, this is the inside, this is now the outside. I want to go ahead and put in an eyelet for the closure for this. And I'm using these 3 16 eyelets that are not really a rose gold, they're kind of actually pink. So we're just going to go with it. They're, they're more of a pink than a rose gold, but they're very, I like them. They're very pretty. So I'm going to try to go kind of in the middle and I'm gonna do a 3 16 punch. And I definitely want to come inside of this part. I don't want to cut through the stitching, but I like to kind of go a little bit high of middle, and I'm just going to eyeball this and do it somewhere right around here. All right, so I have that, and then next I need to make sure that on a 3 16 I have the A1, so let me double check that I have the one, yep, and I have the A, and that is what I need. Now, my little trick is I like to put the eyelet down into the hole before I, as you say, as I like to say, chomp it. 
and then I make sure, whoops, got to go all the way back out to the edge. Then I make sure that I have it um, right where I want it so that as it goes down, and then I chomp it. So now I have that so that I can put a ribbon around this when we get to that point. And what I want to do now is let's do a little bit of decorating with a couple of different things. I have some lace that we can put on the cover. I have some stickers that I can put on this cover. Um, let's see, what else could we put on? Ooh, guess what I just found? I just found some scrap pieces of some fabric too that we could put on, perhaps, we'll see. Um, oh, you know what's really pretty is to put the lace over top of this so that the fabric shows through. Oh, I think we're going to have to do some of that. And so I think what I'm going to do, let's just cut some little pieces off. This is not particularly even, but if it's under the lace, it really won't matter. And so I'm going to, let's do a couple of things with this. I'm going to try to even this out just a little bit so it's not quite so wonky and then maybe we'll do a little bit across the bottom here and we're going to put the lace over top of that got little strings everywhere story of my life all right, let's put this down. I'm just going to tap it real lightly with some Fabri-Tac so that it's not all shiny. Doesn't need a lot to hold it down anyway. So we're just going to do a couple of dots like that. And put that down. And then we're going to do a couple of dots also on the lace. This is... Uh, again, I've kind of watered this down so it has a little bit, it's a little bit too runny and it tends to bleed through on the lace. So I'm trying not to get it to bleed through too much. And we're going to just put that right over that. And let's do another piece like that. Um, let's do a little bit right in there. And you can't really see, you can see a little bit of the fraying, but I am not going to worry too much about that. And let's see, we want another chunk about that long. Where's my glue? There's my glue. I need to, you know, if it was a cat, we'd put a bell on it, but um, I don't think that's going to work for a glue bottle. So I'm going to put this one up in here and some little dabs of glue on this as well. And maybe one more piece on that last part. And I can see some of it bleeding through. I want to get rid of that. All right. And let's do one more on this. Maybe we'll do another section kind of up at the top. Maybe in the middle. Hmm. Let's do it about right there. So it's not at the top. It's not at the bottom. It's kind of in the middle. Let's grab another piece of this fabric. Cut it about right there. Little dabs of glue. We're going to go a little bit longer than that piece, but that's okay. 
I love how this pink picks up the pink in these flowers. I wish I could find more of that fabric. It was something that was donated to me a while ago and I cannot find any more of it. So sometimes we just use all the little tiny scraps we can find to make things last a little bit longer. All right, so now let's throw a couple of pink butterflies because I love the pink butterflies. Um, and, and they come in all different sizes. That's kind of the fun thing. So we could, we'll put one of these down here. Again, I think the trick to layering and sort of collaging is don't think too much. So again, these are stickers. I just printed them out on some sticker paper. And we're going to add a little bit of pop of color to this by adding a couple of pink, ele more pink elements, because right now it's very, um, you know, it's plain, and we're going to just add a couple of little pink elements to this. Then, ooh, this would be fun. I'm going to add a flight of butterflies because they do come in some different sizes. So for this one, we're going to do a small one, and then a bigger one at the bottom, right through here. So we're gonna start at the bottom with this one. And I imagine I could have cut, instead of cutting around the antennae, I could have probably not done that, but I did it and we're going to go with the flow. All right, there's one. Again, like I said, I'm obsessed with this pink butterfly, so we will probably put a ton of pink butterflies all over it. Two, and the last one right here will be three. So we have a flight of pink butterflies here. And then let's do we've got the really big rows there i would like to put a slightly smaller rose but overlapping all of this so we're going to add a rose down at the bottom and maybe a couple of just tiny butterflies in some other places So we've stuck that down on top of it because it overlaps a little bit with that. And let's see what this looks like. If we just throw a couple of tiny butterflies, maybe these butterflies are going around the corner here. I like it. I think we're going to go with it again. I find that if I overthink things, then I don't end up liking what I'm doing. And so just kind of going with it a little bit makes a big difference. I think there's a slightly smaller, no, I guess they're about the same size. That's an illusion. I was thinking I had some slightly smaller butterflies. And this is one that I did cut the um, antennae, antennae, plural of antenna, off. Um, so I may do that on the other one too real quick just so that they look the same. We'll put that one there and then I think, yep, I'm going to just cut these off too. So I'm going to just finish kind of fussy cutting this. I did fussy cut all of these, but now they all look the same. And so this one is going to go up here like that. Now we have the outside decorated and yes, I still may come back. I may do a pocket somewhere, but I think what I wanted to do was all the pockets and things are going to be on the inside of this instead of on the outside. I am trying to figure out how what I want to do for the inside though, because my plan then is to use some of these pieces to make pockets. And some of these would work great as just a pocket, um, but I'm not sure exactly how I want to do this. So let me do some playing around and we'll take a try at this 
uh, again.